Ahoy and welcome back to this narrowboat adventure. Today we're back with another episode of Book Club but today we're starting with favourite boating recipes traditional cabin fare and we're going to begin with a recipe on page eight windfall apple pudding. One thing I really like about this book is that all of the page numbers are written with the entire word rather than just the number. I'll read to you what it says here at the top. There's something satisfying about gathering up windfall apples. In the old days, nothing was ever wasted and it's easy to imagine a boat wife walking along the towpath, perhaps with the horse or going ahead to set a lock, finding fallen apples and putting them in her pocket. So that's the inspiration, I think, behind this particular boating recipe, cabin fare. This is one of the ones that takes less time. Some of the recipes take quite a lot of time like an hour and a half to three to four hours so we're going to wait until we've got a new gas bottle for those or for a particularly cold day so we could cook them on the top of our multi-fuel stove but today we're doing windfall apple pudding so first of all i'm me measuring out six ounces of flour um for the pastry i'm not sure if i've mentioned this before but it's quite difficult to measure things out on a boat. Conventional scales don't work very well at all and even electric scales you have to be standing completely still or they just completely lose track of what's going on. Um, so I've sieved through the flour and then the recipe calls for three ounces of cooking fats. Um, I've decided to use butter because I like butter better. Um, and also at this point I added a pinch of salt. Uh, so I've added the butter and it was a really cold day so what I did was uh, cut the butter up into really really small pieces because I know when you're combining butter and flour it can take a really long time if the pieces are not very soft and even with having cut them up really really small it took absolutely ages to uh, get them all combined. And I did also, I th I'm not sure if you can really see, but as I put the pieces of butter in, I did try and get a coating of flour on the outside so they didn't stick together. This is them once they were already kneaded together quite significantly. And I ended up adding, I think, four teaspoons of water to get it to become a doughy consistency. Um, just be really slow when you're adding the water here. Um, now, I am using a ceramic um, rolling pin. This came with the boat and it is actually really good for pastry. It keeps it all nice and cold so you're sort of not as in as much danger of overworking the dough. You'll notice that there are some cracks in the dough. Um, I'm not a massive perfectionist when it comes to things like this. Um, I don't particularly worry too much about my pastries and things looking absolutely beautiful because for me it's all about taste. Um, they do always look edible and they are always edible generally when I cook. So that's for me is the number one thing. In the recipe, it calls for a eight inch pie tin. I didn't have a pie tin, but I did have a cake tin. And I think the cake tin was probably somewhat taller than the pie tin would be. Um, but I think that worked to my advantage as you'll see in the, um, in the bit where I make the filling. The filling just ended up being so much filling that I'd, I wouldn't have had room for it if all if I'd been in a pie tin. Ah, and also the nice thing about using a cake tin was that it was a lot easier to get... Yeah, hello, Squeak. It was a lot easier to get the uh, pie out. Oh, I keep saying pie. It is it's called a pudding, but it is, it's is—it's got pastry around the edges and a filling, so in my head it's a pie. It was a lot easier to get it out once it was cool um, it's because I could just unhook the, the tin. And as you can see here, I'm just sort of squishing it all together. And I did cut off the edges a little bit and make um, 
make a little jam tart out of the leftovers with some of my dams and jam which you may have seen the video of me making and if you haven't seen the video of me making the dams and jam I recommend you go and have a look at that one I'll leave a link in the description so now we are moving on to the filling so in the recipe it calls for two large eating apples and one large cooking apple and I got this thinking it was one large cooking apple but in hindsight I think it might be an extra large cooking apple because I had planned to do two um, of the normal sized eating apples for each of the apples it calls for because I was figuring this was a large apple but after having done the one large eat cook cooking apple and two eating apples I decided to stop because I just had so much filling you'll see in a second that I just it would have been ridiculous and it's also in the recipe that you add two ounces of seedless raisins um, so those also went in with the filling I just think it would have been far more filling than could ever have possibly filled this pie so I think I don't know maybe this person's definition of a large apple is different from mine so you can see here I cut up the apples into really really small pieces because this is only supposed to be cooked for 35 minutes and the apples are not cooked before they go in so I knew that they'd need to be quite small if they were going to be cooked in that short period of time so this is the two eating apples and that one large cooking apple and the uh, the raisins going in now and as you can see I'm having a bit of a job just to fit in what I've got so um, I was glad I didn't cut any more apples up and um, yeah when this came out the apples were still a little bit crunchy but they were definitely cooked and that was really nice um, so the last bit of the filling is uh, well one ounce of self-raising flour and then I'm gonna measure out two ounces of caster sugar yes and uh, I'm gonna add an egg to that so I'm not too sure if I did this right as as I've mentioned I don't have a picture of what this is supposed to look like and I've never eaten it before so I did my best um, I added the egg to the sugar and it says to whisk it up until it's uh, thick and creamy um, now I wonder if I did it again if I might remove the yolk and then whisk it up till they're sort of stiff peaks and then add the yolk and the flour back in together because I feel as though I've seen other apple pies that might be a bit like this and they have a big poofy roof and that's kind of what I thought might happen with this but didn't happen uh, but anyway here I'm just combining together those last few ingredients I'm really sorry about squeak meowing all the way through this she's just decided she needs some cuddles and who am I to tell her no So this didn't seem like enough topping really to me. But as you'll see here, I do manage to cover the entire top of the pie. Did take a little bit of work to get the entire thing covered, but I did manage it. I guess because it was self-raising flour that went in here I just kind of expected it to poof up a little bit but it didn't it was very delicious in the end though I must say and not terribly sweet two ounces of sugar throughout this whole recipe is actually very very low sugar if if you imagine how much you must weigh for the rest of ingredients now it was getting a bit dark by the time I finished it so we thought we'd take it out and uh, let it cool off and come back to it in the morning of course I couldn't resist it till morning and I did have to have a piece of the pie before of the pudding the windfall apple pudding but here it is in the light of day with icing sugar dredged over the top 
And as you can see, that topping turned into this sort of lovely um, custard throughout the pudding, which was really lovely. And I'll hand over to me and Seb to show you us having a bite. Okay, I'm gonna take a bite now. Oh, I wanna get some. Mm. Let's get some pastry as well. It's good. I was very pleasantly surprised by how the windfall apple pudding came out today. I'd never made it before, so I had no idea what it was supposed to look like, but it tasted good and it looked very nice as well. We will have some more videos very soon coming up with traditional boating recipes, uh, favourite boating recipes, traditional cabin fare. So this book was actually gathered by Cass Best and there's some really beautiful pictures in here. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to join us again, you can click subscribe down below and join us again on this narrow boat adventure. You can find me on Facebook. I'm also on Patreon if you'd like to support these videos. And as always, have a wonderful day. Bye. Mm -hmm.